Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1432. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, either the finished file or start file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Wow, we have another amazing DAX video. We're going to see how to create DAX formulas to build confidence intervals using a bunch of functions, but in particular, we'll see confidence.t and standard deviation for the sample. Now, here's our finished result. We have a sample of data over here, and we want to calculate the average number of pages for each version, then the standard deviation, then the margin of error. Then we need to create a text formula in a pivot table that will represent our ad claim, something like at 95% confidence interval, we can expect a customer to print between 2,192 and 2,626 pages from the printer cartridge. Now, this example comes straight from my statistics class at Highline College. Over here, these are the formulas we used. If you want to look at them back in the statistics class, here's the data analysis feature that's available in Excel to make the same calculations. But all of these Excel abilities can only do one sample at a time. And look at this. We have one particular sample where we went out and tested 10 different cartridges and got the number of pages that each cartridge printed for that particular cartridge. And then we did a separate sample where we took 10 cartridges got the pages, and then a third one. And what we'd like to do in our formula is have DAX formulas, including this amazing text formula, which I have no idea how to do a text formula in a straight pivot table, but in a DAX data model pivot table, you can do it. We want to make all these calculations for each particular version. Here's a list of all the formulas we're going to calculate. If we scroll over here, here's a list of our formulas. Now, this is statistics. And so if you're not familiar with statistics, a lot of this won't make sense. But luckily, I have a complete class. Here's a link to my complete statistics class. There's the reference video that does this particular example with formulas and the data analysis feature. And I have even a video about standard deviation in Power Query and with array formulas. All right, let's go over to the start file. Now, I've already started the pivot table. We can see the table's already been imported. I took this Excel table, imported it. We can go look at the data model. I not only have date of the sample version and pages in the F page sample results table, but this is where we'll make all of our measures. And over here, I have the confidence interval and Alt tab if we go over Right there is our one cell table. I wanted to import this parameter from an Excel cell here into our data model. So that is just a single cell table. And we can reference that number in our DAX formulas. I'm going to go over to Data View. We're on F Pages. I'm going to click down in the Measure Grid. And up here in the Formula Bar, our first calculation is average number of printed pages, colon, equal sign, and we can use the straight average function. Now, our table is F page sample results, and there is the field name sample number of pages from cartridge. Now, close parentheses, I'm going to hit Enter. We're going to go over and look at our pivot table. There's our first measure. If I drag it down to values, I could see, oh, there's a bunch of decimals. And I want to round this to the actual number of pages. So I'm going to come back over to the Measure Grid, click up in the Formula Bar, and we'll use the Round function. There's our calculation. And we're going to round it to the integer. So comma, 0 for number of digits. Say, hey, round that to, in our case, the whole number. Close parentheses and Enter. Alt-Tab, and there's the number of pages. Alt-Tab, we could add some formatting if we'd like. There's comma, and I'm going to decrease decimals. All right, our next calculation, I'm going to click below up in the formula bar. Sample size, colon, equal sign, and we're going to count the rows of our F page sample results table. Now, of course, 
since we're doing DAX in the data model, when we have version in the row area of the pivot table, that filter will filter the table down to just the number of records in this table that's for that particular version. So counting rows will give us how many rows are in the table, which is our sample size, and Enter. Alt-Tab, just to see. We could drag this down there. And so we have a different sample size for each one of our versions. Now, we're not going to use this in our final pivot table report, but we'll use it in other calculations. So I'm going to drag it off. Now, before we go on to our next calculation, I put the pivot table here. I should have put it on a new sheet. It's very crowded here with all this other stuff. So we're going to highlight the pivot table, Control-X to cut it, go down, Insert a new sheet by clicking this button, or we can use the keyboard, Shift F11. And then up here in cell A1, Control V. I'm going to hold Control and roll the wheel on my mouse. Expand the column, highlight the labels in the pivot table, Home, Wrap Text. All right, our next calculation is going to be Alpha. Now I want to go back over to the sheet that says Statistics. Actually, double click, I'm going to call this PT report or something like that. We're going to go back over to the statistics. We have our confidence interval. That's the table that was already imported. Now, what the confidence interval means for us is through our statistical techniques, since we have sample data and we're going to use that average, we're 95% sure that our actual population parameter, that means the average of the population, would be in our interval. Alpha, which is 1 minus the confidence interval, is the risk we're taking making a mistake. That means if we had 100 random samples, five of the confidence intervals that we built would not contain the actual population parameter. All right, let's go over and build our formula for alpha. Alpha colon equal sign 1 minus, and we need to get the value from our, if you can see down here, the F confidence interval table. Well, the way we can do that is with the values function. Values will always give us a unique list of items, but down our R table, F confidence interval, confidence interval only has one item. So when it delivers a unique list, it will be a single value. So when I hit Enter, we get our risk of 5%. Now, we're not going to use that in the pivot table, but we'll use it in our later calculations. Our next calculation is click down in the measure grid, up in the formula bar. Standard deviation number of printed pages, colon, equal sign. And we're going to use the same formula that exists over in Excel, their standard deviation for the population and the sample. We have a single column, so we can simply use standard deviation dot s. If we had to iterate over a column to make a particular calculation with a measure, then we would use standard deviation x, either one of these. But there's our function. We're using the dot s because we have sample data. And standard deviation is an important calculation in statistics. It will measure the variation in our sample. If all of the printed page numbers were really close together, then we get a small standard deviation, meaning there's not a lot of variation. But if our sample number of printed pages were all over the place, some were 1,500, others were 2,900, then there would be a lot of variation. And standard deviation would report a big number. So we need to calculate the variation using standard deviation. Now we have our F down arrow to pages, and our column is sample number of pages from cartridge close parentheses, and Enter. Now we can see that we have lots of extraneous decimals, and I want to round to the page. So I come up and add the round function. The number, that's our standard deviation, comma, 0 to round to the page, and Enter. Now our next calculation is going to be margin of error. So I'm going to click in the measured grid, click up in the formula bar. So margin of error, colon, equal sign. Now, the margin of error will be the amount that we subtract and add from our average to get a lower and upper limit, where we make a statement, 
like we're 95% sure that the number of pages for a cartridge will be between these two values. Now, we do not know the population standard deviation. So when we use our confidence functions, we have to use a special set of distributions, the t distributions. If we did know the population standard deviation, we could use norms. So there it is. I'm going to hit tab. Now normally, and in the Excel video that I showed a link to at the beginning, I show you all the intermediate steps that go into calculating margin of error. For example, we have to calculate standard error, degrees of freedom. But with this function, we don't have to make those intermediate steps. We put alpha, standard deviation, and the size of our sample. And it will calculate the correct margin of error. Now, our alpha, I type the square bracket. And there's our list of measures. I'm going to hit tab, comma, the standard deviation, square bracket. And I can down arrow to get our standard deviation comma, size. Now, another way to put our measures in, hey, look, there's the sample size. If I click on the measure grid, the correct cell with my measure, it'll put the measure in square brackets. Now, we always follow the convention. Measures are in square brackets only. Columns always have table name and then the column name in square bracket. There's our margin of error. Close parentheses and Enter. It's got all sorts of extraneous decimals. So I want to click back up here and round. And at the very end, comma, 0 to round to the page and Enter. Now let's go over to the Pivot Table, Alt-Tab. And here's our emerging list of measures. I'm going to drag standard deviation down, margin of error down. See if I can add some home wrap text. Now we're starting to get a picture of the ranges for our confidence interval. There's the average for each one of our samples. And that's the amount that we add and subtract. So we're going to subtract from that number 217 and then add 217. And that will give us the lower and upper limits for our confidence interval. Alt-Tab. In the measure grid, I'm going to click come up to the formula bar. Lower limit for confidence interval, colon, equal sign. I'm going to click on average down here. I can see the measure up in the formula bar minus the margin of error. Now, of course, in the pivot table, the measure will see the criteria from the row area. So for a particular version, like version 2, that will be the correct average, and that will be the correct margin of error. Enter. Now we can do our upper limit. Click in the measure grid up in the formula bar. Upper limit for CI colon equal sign. And there's my average plus my margin of error. There's our formula, Enter. Now I'm going to do two formulas for our add claim. The first one is a more formal statement, and the second one will be less formal. I want to say something like at 95% confidence interval, we can expect a customer to print between the upper and lower. So this is going to be a text formula, and it will totally work in our pivot table. Click in the cell, click up into the formula bar, add claim 01 colon equal sign. In double quotes, at space and double quote. And I want to join this two, and I need to get the actual 95% value. So we'll use the values function. Down arrow, there's our F confidence, confidence interval. Now, that will give us a decimal. And I actually want to format it as a percentage. So over in Excel, we'd use the text function. Over here in DAX, we use the format function. There's the value, comma. And then you have to, for format, both in Excel and over here, you have to know custom number formatting. And you got to put it in double quotes, 0, 0.00, percentage simple, and double quotes. So that is the custom number formatting for percentage. If I close parentheses, we could just hit Enter and see that our text formula is starting to emerge at 95%. Click back up in the formula bar, ampersand, and double quote, and I'm going to type. Now I type confidence interval. We can expect a customer to print between, and then we need to get the lower and upper limits. Now, actually, I want to come to the beginning. And how about at a uh, space, 95% confidence interval. We can expect a customer 
come to the end, and we'll use ampersand. And we need the lower limit, and we don't need to round it or do anything about formatting. So I can simply square bracket, down arrow. There's our lower limit for confidence interval. And join it, double quote, and space, and double quote, another ampersand, square bracket. Now we go and get our upper limit, ampersand, and double quote, and the rest of it would be pages, pages from the printer cartridge. That is quite a formula when I hit Enter. We can see it start to emerge. Alt-Tab. Now this is exciting, a text formula in a pivot table. I'm going to click and drag, do a little formatting, highlight some wrap text. And look at that. The filter context and our measures totally worked. At a 95% confidence interval, we can expect a customer to print between. And there it is for that particular version. It got the correct lower and upper limit pages from our printer cartridge. Down here, the measure is doing its thing. Now, we'll deal with the grand totals at the very end, but I want to go create our second Add Claim. Alt-Tab, click below. Add Claim 02 colon equal sign. In double quotes, I'll type. A customer can expect an average of, and we'll join that to our average. Ampersand, and double quote. Space pages within a margin of error, and we'll join that to the actual margin of error. Finally, ampersand, double quote, pages, and double quote. Enter, Alt-Tab. There's our Add Claim 2. Drag it down over here. Add some formatting. A customer can expect an average of 2,409 pages within a margin of error of 217 pages. You know, that might be what they print on the back of the box after doing their samples. Let's go and turn off the grand totals. Alt-Tab, click on the first one. Right after the equal sign, before round, we want this formula only to run when there's a single item in the row area of the pivot table. So we're going to use the has one value on the version column. And we're going to start with if has one value, FP down arrow to version, close parentheses. If that comes out true, comma, then please run the formula. Otherwise, and if we leave that argument off, the if function will use the blank function, which is a substitute for an Excel empty cell or a null in a database. Close parentheses and Enter. You can see it's blank here. Alt-Tab. That one is shut off. Now we're going to go and do the same thing for each one of these other formulas. And I'm totally going to cheat. I'm going to go ahead and highlight all the way to the comma, Control-C, Escape, Standard Deviation. We need to put that here. So after the equal sign, Control-V, come to the end, close parentheses, and Enter. Margin of error. After the equal sign before round, Control-V, close parentheses, and Enter. And for our Add Claim, very carefully after the equal sign and before the text, Control V. I'm going to pull down the formula bar, come to the end, close parentheses, and Enter. Add Claim 2. Control V with a parentheses at the end, and Enter. Alt Tab, and there is our final version. That is just amazing. We're allowed to calculate average, standard deviation, confidence.t to get our margin of error, and then create these amazing text formulas. There are just so many things that DAX can do in a data model pivot table that you can't do in a standard pivot table. Alt-Tab, we saw a bunch of cool functions. We used the average. We used count rows for our sample size. Values in calculating alpha. We saw the standard deviation dot s function. We saw the amazing confidence dot t for margin of error. We calculated a lower and upper limit, and we saw how to make a text formula in DAX for the values area of a pivot table. All right, we'll see you next video.